Hello, my name is Ankur Shukla, and I'm currently uh, a vascular surgery attending at the Bay Pines VA in St. Petersburg, Florida. I uh, actually grew up in uh, North Central Florida and did my medical school at the University of Florida, and at which point I had the opportunity to do my integrated vascular surgery training at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Uh, Dr. Michelle Macaroon was my uh, chairman and program director at the time and uh, continues to be. I have uh, started this webcast to give students from all aspects of training the tools they may need to succeed in technical surgery. My goal is to make you and myself a better technical surgeon. And my real goal is to challenge you to think about surgery the way athletes think and practice their profession. Uh, we're gonna get into it. Um, my objective today is to learn to tie knots. Uh, for those of you who are proficient, uh, hopefully we can get a little bit more practice with our non-dominant hand. So below what you will see is I have uh, objects of different weight as well as some um, 2.0 silk suture. I had a uh, wonderful mentor that actually is the reason why I'm doing vascular surgery today. His name is Charles Keith Ozaki and I had the opportunity to work in his lab when I was just in high school. Through him, I met uh, many of uh, really amazing surgeons, and one of my earliest memories of technical surgery was uh, Dr. J, and he was a uh, surgeon from China who was doing work with Dr. Ozaki, and I remember him telling me that first, to learn to be a good surgeon, you gotta be able to tie knots. And his rule of thumb was, to be able to tie 60 knots in 60 seconds. Now I can tell you after many years of practice, I have still not been able to reach that landmark. But his point was that you gotta get enough motor memory practice to get proficient in knot tying. Um, so like I was mentioning, I have uh, different objects in front of me. Uh, and the reason I have these different objects is for the different weight. So I have a long needle driver, I have the Castro, a small uh, hemostat, some pickups, and finally a pen. The first thing uh, you always want to do when you start to learn how to tie knots is use something heavy. And the reason for this is, is that your grip or the feel in your hands is really not going to be there. So I've laid these in order of decreasing weight, and so we're going to get rid of the lightweight materials and stick with something heavier. Next, uh, I prefer to use uh, 2 o silk for this demonstration. And the reason for this is, uh, is that o silk I think is uh, very easy to handle and large, so you can see it quite better. But uh, as we start making the transition to smaller and smaller suture, it makes sense to start out with the 2 o so the first thing I want you to do um, is if you have these materials at hand, uh, great. If not, uh, you can always pause this or uh, ask your friendly scrub tech to give you some of these materials. Uh, or just use something else. Uh, you can use a hammer. You can use whatever you want. So cut out a fair, fairly long segment of this 2O silk. And the first thing is for the people that don't really know how to tie knots, we'll start real basic. So I'm actually going to just clip this down to the table, which adds a fair amount of weight. And you can see that it can still move. And that's OK. You, you actually want a little bit of tension on this. And see, you can dangle and still tie the knots you want to tie. So let's start off with the basic setup for how to tie knots. Now, knot tying. Um, Essentially, the first big decision you have to make is are you going to tie with your dominant hand, which is the right hand in my case, or the non-dominant hand, which is my left hand in this scenario. Uh, I'm going to be throwing one-handed knots. Um, uh, why? Uh, the most common knot that I throw as a vascular surgeon. Uh, when I do close the fascia, I do throw two-handed knots. I, I believe you have a little bit more control in terms of sliding the knots down. But for this demonstration, and probably what I see most surgeons doing, is that they throw one-handed knots. So I think it's best to start learning there. 
There are many old school surgeons that say, hey, you can't throw one-handed knots unless you can prove that you can throw two-handed knots, but I don't necessarily 100% agree with them. But if they're making you do that in your training process, just do it and move on. So let's start. So I'll be tying with my left hand because it's my non-dominant hand. And I do want to get a little practice myself. The first thing you want to do is throw two knots that are in the same direction. And so this position where we go under will be called the forehand. And then this, where you loop it over, will be called a backhand. And this is just some terminology that we can use so we can talk about throwing different types of knots. So follow, me, follow my left hand. The right hand is going to stay taut. Again, you can see how much tension I'm putting on this instrument by how high it lifts in the air. And that's just, it'll be useful later, but this is just as a reference point now. And with my left hand, I'm actually going to grip with my middle finger and my thumb. Then with my index finger, I'm going to get underneath that suture. So look at my positioning. Again, it's the middle finger and the thumb, which sits around your index finger. Then this, you can actually use your right hand to make this triangle that you see here. So you see this triangle, this triangle. What this allows you to do is then use your index finger to loop around and use the back end of it to grab the suture. Okay, so we're going to do that a few more times in slow motion just so everyone can see what happened. Thumb and middle finger, index finger. With my right hand, I'm using the suture and making that making that triangle shape. Okay? Triangle. And you can see it's actually pushing on the other side. And then with my index finger, looping around, grabbing that suture. Okay, I'll show you one last time before we move on with the backhand. Again, thumb and index finger, left hand, right hand comes in, I loop my index finger down, and I grab it. Okay, so that's our forehand throw. Feel free to pause it, uh, rewind, do as much as you need so you can get that. A lot of people feel that the backhand is easier, and uh, I think it just depends uh, how you set yourself up. But for the backhand, what you want to do is, again, so things change a little bit. Now I'm holding the suture in my left hand with my index finger and my thumb. And what I'm going to do with this hand is I'm actually going to bring my fingers in front of the suture. Okay, so there it is. Bring it in front. I'm going to drape this down. So now that the suture is running over my finger. And then with this hand, it comes around which allows you to essentially use your thumb, sorry, middle finger, to bring it around. Okay, let's do that again in slow motion so we can all see. Index finger and thumb, loop it around. Right hand brings the suture around. And then only using your middle finger, you're able to bring that suture around. Okay? So, just to review, we're going back to the forehand, thumb, middle finger, throwing a forehand knot. Switching to the backhand, so watch that transition, I had it here, again, index finger and thumb, and then using my middle finger to loop this around, and then knock down. So this is a pet peeve of mine, and I think um, 
it doesn't matter so much with this suture because it's hard to break but when you start getting with five O's and six O's you'll notice people that haven't been used to bringing the knot down will actually break the suture and I'm going to teach you right now when how to prevent this from happening so again throwing a forehand okay here's a forehand and what people do is that they just bring this to the side and by doing this and then pulling you're just asking for that smaller suture to be broken why because you're expecting this lateral force to bring the suture down and what you notice is that as I pull hard enough to get the knot to sit tight that my instrument is lifting up so in a delicate artery or vein or in a tissue that's friable by pulling to the side you can actually rip that tissue and unfortunately make your hole bigger so what is the solution well the solution is when you have your suture you actually want to bring the knot down how do you do it you take your fingers in the front of the suture and you slide it down okay when you're there you regrasp and then with your index finger you just send your index finger below the level of the knot I'm not pushing hard I'm just sending it below the level of the knot okay so let's see that again forehand now my fingers are in front of the suture I'm sliding it down I'm regrasping and then with my index finger I'm selling it below the level of the knot and this is the only point where I'm actually pulling counter tension with my right hand okay so there forehand backhand forehand backhand and this is actually very important and the reason for this is is that you always want to have the knot tied secure and if you bring your finger down routinely and you practice it as such or if this is your first time learning if you just learn it correctly then you never have to worry if you don't tie down a small side branch of a vein bypass it's going to bleed out and every once in a once a year this happens and unfortunately it causes complications with the patients by, so by ensuring that you're practicing tying down correctly you'll never have to worry about this problem for yourself okay so we tied a few knots and let me show you something about speed in this situation so forehand backhand forehand backhand so you notice as I pull this apart you can speed up how many knots you can throw but again it is not a good secure knot so I would not count these knots as one two three four but I would say one two three four so you can see that it is a little bit slower but I can tell you you'd much rather have a quality knot and this is the reason why I don't think that 60 for 60 is really achievable because to tie good quality knots it takes time and but that is more important that you have the motor memory in your fingers and at least you stri strive for a higher number in order to improve that motor memory so let's do a couple of things now I'm going to show you something that really puzzles a lot of people um, and I think once I start it'll make sense in terms of what I'm trying to describe to you guys so a lot of people when they first start they really feel like they need to pull hard on the suture to have control so I'm gonna lay my hand on it and if you do that you really have a lot of tension in this suture which when you're usually an intern it gives you more control or at least the feeling 
that you have more control. And you'll notice that the attendings that are working with you, if they recognize this, they will not necessarily let go of a hemostat because they know that you're an aggressive tire. You want to show them that you're a delicate tire and you can drop knots when it counts. And what people don't realize is that I'm trying to put a lot of tension on the suture. What you're doing is actually making it more difficult for yourself to manipulate it. So I'm going to try to tie knots now with this just free hanging in space. Okay. So you see it's the suture is pretty taut. Okay. Does it make it easier to tie slightly? But again, this is not ideal. What you know then you realize is that if you just relax the suture, you don't need a lot of tension to bring bring your fingers through it smoothly. Which is the most common reason people pull the suture tightly. They feel like by keeping it in a straight line, they can manipulate the suture and getting around it a lot easier. But if again, if you keep it nice and loose, you can still make the movements you want to make and it doesn't look that difficult. Now, you're noticing one of my pet peeves of tying, which is obviously we're using the last end of the suture, but the, the more and more you work in a small confined space, which is what people like again because they lack control, sometimes your fingers, if you got big fingers like me, they'll get stuck and it'll make you look sh shabby. So when you have an opportunity to work way out, do it. And let me show you an example of that. So we're going to get rid of this. You guys might be able to see the difference in suturing from pushing it down and tying it down. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. So let me just get another piece of suture here. Okay. So the suture I have right now, I'm going to adjust the camera just slightly, is much longer. Okay. It's probably a little too long, so I'll cut it again. Okay, so much longer suture. Putting it down in the middle. Now again, a lot of people feel the need to work down here because they feel like they have more control of this suture. By working in these more confined spaces, they feel like they can add more tension and then get the suture through without problems. Okay, so let's see that again. Small confined space down. But if you notice, if you work further up, you have a lot more room and suture to really make it easy for yourself. You, and you don't have to put it on a lot of tension. So again, I, I bring my suture way back, make my knot, this is a backhand, and then I bring it down. And you'll see really the bringing it down portion here very nicely. You got a lot of suture. My fingers come around. They send it down. I re-grasp with these fingers and then below the level of the knot. And you can see that if I'm doing it in a consistent base, the driver really does not move up. It may move left and right, but it does not lift up. Because again, I'm bringing the knot down. I'm not necessarily pulling it up like this. Okay? So down. And again, I'm working well back. I'm not pulling up too hard on this. And by relaxing it, you can actually manipulate the suture and get your fingers out the way very easily. It's one. Again, nice and See, look at, the, look at the loops. I don't have a lot of tension on it. They're just coming up and around. My fingers are coming through. Okay, let's see it again. Forehand. Nice and easy. Backhand. Again, it goes like this. 
nice and loose, no problems. Dropped at that time. Okay, fingers go in front and then down. Okay, so let's just do a little time trial for ourselves and we will see what we can do. So, nothing fancy, y'all. I just have my cell phone here and let me just get some stuff away. I'm going to pull up the timer. Okay. Timer is there. I'm going to set it up for one minute. And I'm just going to try to tie knots. Again, I'm not going to go for speed just yet. I'm just going to try to tie knots. Okay. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. And that's one minute. So sixteen knots in one minute. Uh, if you look at the knots, they're very uniform. Uh, I alternated from forehand to backhand. And the more important thing is, is that I brought every knot down and set it down. Forehand, backhand, knot comes down, sit it down. And this, I think, is a very good place to start. I think if you're able to do at least 20 knots in a minute, I think that's a pretty good benchmark. Now, as you become further on in your training, I think you should probably shoot for in the mid-20s to 30s. And I think that's pretty good motor memory for uh, at least learning how to tie knots. Now, um, other things I wanted to mention about knot tying, when you go for speed, you'll notice when I try for speed, it becomes a little bit not so smooth. And if I continue to go at this pace, I can probably get 38 or 40, but again, it, it really loses, it, loses that fluidity. And what I want to teach you guys is how to get so you look smooth while you operate. And the reason for that is, is the, the better you look operating, the more your attendings or senior residents will let you do. If they ask you to tie a knot as an intern and you can put down 10 or 15 and it looks good, and guess what? They're going to let you do a lot more. If you're a medical student and you can tie knots, I'm not sure they're going to let you, but if you can, that's really going to surprise them. And you know what? They're going to ask you to tie knots. I was uh, standing with my uh, uh, attending and uh, chief resident when I was a medical student and we we're doing an LAR and there was a deep knot to tie. And by this time I had uh, already practiced knot tying. I could probably drop 20 or 25 at the time and they handed me a suture. And before they could say no, I just tied it and brought it down. And they were both impressed and disappointed because number one, I did something that they didn't want me to do but they were impressed that I was able to tie a good knot. That being said, they went and retied my knot because they were uh, not so confident in a medical student's knot. <laughs> so, but the point is, is that you gotta be, you gotta make sure you can do it when the time comes. You don't wanna practice on people, obviously. You wanna be able to have the technical skills necessary before you get there. So let's move to a smaller suture. So I have a 3.0 and it's proline. So a couple things I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut the needles. And we can talk more about needles and which one to cut, which one to have your hand in. But for now, we'll just cut both of them. 
Okay. Now we have our three of proline. All right. Okay. So not like your silk. I know it's a little bit harder to see here, guys. Um, but I'm using this just to make an example. So I'm going to buy myself a little bit of room, cut this in half. And again, I'm going to clip this in. Let's just try to get it halfway this time. Yeah, about right. OK. So with this suture, again, it does not have as much tensile strength as a silk or a larger suture. And so what people try to do, and this will be more obvious when you start using bigger needles, sorry, smaller needles in the suture, is that they really want the tissue to come together so they really push down on this and you can see by really pushing down or pulling down on this that this suture oh, is trying to break it but it's holding up pretty well so that's good um, especially if it's a 5-0 or 6-0 it'll definitely break for you but the point is always the same. If you you got to try to bring your finger below the level of the knot. So my suggestion is always you start out with the 2 silk, get the feel of it. And then when you're ready, you do what I'm doing right now, which is you go down incrementally to a smaller and smaller suture. So this is a 3 -0. And you notice with the proline, it still holds some of the memory. And it always, because the way it's spooled in into the uh, case, it always has a slight curve on it. So when you relax it, it may regain some part of that curve. So you really got to learn to pull it up enough, but not so much that you're just uh, distending um, the tissue that it's sitting on. So enough so you get enough push, but again, the further out you go, the more play you'll have forehand, backhand. And the one nice thing about proline is that it slides very nicely. Now, um, a lot of people, you'll see surgeons, cardio, cardio surgeons, vascular surgeons, wet their hands before they tie. Um, it's not totally necessary. If, if you got a lot of blood on your hands and you feel like it's going to catch, then go ahead and squirt your hands. Otherwise, it's an unnecessary step. Um, and you can just go on tying. Again, forehand, backhand. And again, you see, even if the knot looks like it's down, what I'm doing is I'm sending my fingers down and bringing my fingers below the level of the knot. And this way I know. And this is the only time, like I said, I'm pulling counter tension with my right hand. Left hand's down, right hand's pulling counter tension. So the knot is down and secure. Okay. So let's do this again. We'll time ourselves. Smaller suture. Okay, get my phone ready here, timer, okay, so one minute's on the clock, let's start, okay. one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17. Okay, good. So 17 knots. And again, 
looking at them, and I know it's hard for you to see, but I'm looking at them and they're all brought down. There's not space in between the knots, there's no air knots, and this is a successful tie. So as you're learning, just remember, work on this first, then you work on getting speed, and then what I would recommend strongly doing is having someone who's had more experience than you and having them watch you. See what they can suggest to make your motions more efficient. A lot of the times this is motor memory and like any athlete you got to develop some palmar strength and some thenar uh, strength as well and that just comes with tying a lot of sutures. Just to have a hold it with your thumb requires some strength and that honestly will come in time. I remember learning or teaching myself and this was very very difficult. My hands would cramp but to hold the suture gently requires definitely some practice which can only come in time. So what I would recommend is do it like you're working out. Come home, eat dinner, relax, watch TV, have some suture around either your belt buckle or something heavy that you can put it on. When you're learning for the first time, have something very heavy so you don't have to worry about practicing with a counterbalance. That will come with time, but you want to first practice with something very heavy, especially for those um, med students or even undergrad students who are learning just how to tie ties. You want to have something really heavy so you just can focus on really learning the movements. Then, as you become an intern and you can get up to 20-25 knots in a minute, I would say start focusing on using lighter objects so you can start really learning how to control that tension in your hands. Um, let's move on to something a little bit more challenging, something lighter. So this is a pen. You guys knew that, I didn't have to tell you that. Um, but I had a, a wonderful attending named Jay Cho, who has uh, really taken a lot of his time to teach me some technical vascular surgery. And uh, he said when he was training, he would get 7-0 and practice tying around a pencil and he would do it without the pencil moving. Now this one has a little bit more tension but let's see if we can uh, make him proud by practicing some of this stuff. Okay. So this is a pen. Okay. Let's see how we can do. Again, keep it loose. If it rolls that's okay. But what you don't want it to do is lift up, okay? So it's down. So you can see this is very difficult, especially with the 3-0, because it's not the suture itself has a lot of memory. The 6 0 and 7 0, it actually becomes easier to do this because the suture itself is lighter and allows you to have a little bit more control. And you can start to gauge yourself what points of your knot tying, for me, working myself back where I put a lot of tension on the tissue. So I can just slow that down. Okay. And you can see I'm not rushing this, I'm just taking my time. With the goal trying to be get this suture down. Okay. Tie a couple more knots here because I'm running out of suture. Okay. Last one here. Okay. So 
very difficult and you can still see that I have not perfected this art. Um, again, a little bit easier with a smaller suture. But the reason for doing this in a very light object is so you can start training your hands for something lighter. Now, now that I've done this, what I'm going to do is go back to something heavier. And then when you really notice is that by training yourself on something very light, it makes a profound difference with normal tissue. And you can see that even some of the lateral movements that I was making earlier have diminished because I practiced on something very, very light. Okay, and again, conceptually, everything is the same. I go back to basics of suturing, which is how you position your hands. Uh, more importantly, bring the knot below the level uh, of where you're suturing to and tying knots to. And finally, in terms of just weight management, you know, always easy with something heavy to pull real hard, fascia, um, fat, you know, legs, whatever you need. But when it's something light, you really have to loosen up. And when you do that, you still have control. Um, well, I want to say uh, thank you for watching. Um, hopefully this will be the first of many uh, webcasts where we can go over different aspects of surgery um, and especially technical surgery. Uh, next time we'll be working on just basics of uh, throwing a needle. How do you hold it? Do you palm it? Do you put your fingers through it? Um, where do I stand? Do, do you want to be a surgeon that moves your body and keeps the needle angle the same? Or do you want to be someone that uh, is really more proficient with needle angles and doesn't necessarily move their body? Um, we'll be addressing some of these questions and again hopefully my goal is to make you a better technical surgeon um, and my real goal again is to challenge you to think about surgery uh, you gotta start thinking about surgery as a technical sport the same way uh, quarterbacks pass the, uh, practice throwing we gotta start practicing throwing our knots throwing sutures and uh, setting up different scenarios that challenge us so that when we get to real patients, it makes all the difference. Um, so thank you very much. If you have any questions, uh, please, please feel free to ask me or you can post them below. Um, like I said, uh, hopefully you'll see uh, a lot more of these. I'm going to try to start doing them uh, initially once a week and then as uh, we get more interest and I get more equipment, we can start doing it more often. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good night.